Hey, how's it going? So, today, um, well, as I film stuff, I'm not necessarily planning things out, and there's a few random projects I'm kind of working on, but today, case in point, I, uh, I start working on something, and then I go and edit the footage, and then I realize, oh, this seems to be kind of its own video, and I was going to include it in something else. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the test bench, and in case you're wondering what that is, it's essentially going to be this cart, and we're going to have some wheelchair motors. Uh, there you can see a couple of them there. But we're going to attach some wheelchair motors, controllers, batteries, joysticks, pretty much everything. Oh, camera straight. Uh, pretty much everything in a complete functioning wheelchair is going to be attached to this cart. I've got enough chairs coming through here now and getting parts from various sources, repairing things, stuff like that, that I need to have a platform set up for hooking up controllers, motors, actuators, things like that. So essentially I need a wheelchair that is mounted to a bench that I can just hook random parts up to and be able to quickly troubleshoot problems, maybe do a little bit of programming on things, stuff like that. So you're gonna hear me talk a lot about this test bench, but mainly this video is gonna be about some really old crusty batteries that we try to bring back to life. People seem to like videos about batteries, so it's kind of its own thing today. And also cleaning the garage a little bit. Um, there's actually enough space in here I could park a small mini, like one of the old 70s ones. Um, yeah, so that's nice, having space in here now. But uh, yeah, here you go. Here's a video about batteries. So I've been going through the garage, cleaning out things. Uh, I've got a lot more space in here than we did before, but I've been working on, or planning, planning for the uh, test bench project, and I realized I've already got a Rubbermaid cart that would work perfect for this. It's right back here. And there isn't really anything important sitting on it. It's just kind of acting like a shelf at the moment. And I have shelves right here. So I think we're going to take all the garbage off of that, put it up here. And then also while I was digging around, I found a set of batteries I didn't know I had. So this is the dead row over here. Uh, there's a couple of Invacare chair frames. This TDX SI2 was my first power chair base. Um, I took some parts off of it for the wheelchair barbecue. And then this back here, the Storm TDX3, this was a chair I built, uh, I've got a picture of it, but it was a hybrid electric gasoline powered wheelchair, basically. I modified a charger to put out a whole bunch of power, and I had a little Honda generator that went on the back of the chair. When I built that thing originally, uh, that was back when wheelchairs didn't really have more than like a four to five, maybe six mile range at the most. And I wanted to be able to go to the automotive swap meet. Here in Portland, uh, they've got a great big swap meet. It's the entire expo center, all the buildings, all the parking lots, and also the Portland International Raceway track, which is a two mile road course, the entire thing. So when you go to that for two days in a row and you're in a power wheelchair, you've got to have like 15, 20 miles of range. So I built this chair specifically for that. As long as I had gasoline and I started with the batteries fully charged, I had, a, I had unlimited range. So it was actually pretty cool. The, it was one of those old Honda suitcase generators. It's like an old uh, EM600 or something like that, like that, back when they were still made out of metal. But I was able to run the throttle down quite a bit on it, and the charger I was using would work at like 30 or 40 hertz. So it was quiet. I could carry on a conversation. It would be buzzing away right behind me here. And uh, yeah, but I just discovered that there's still some batteries in here. I do believe those are group 24 75 amp hour batteries. Those batteries haven't been touched in years. It's probably been five years or more since those were used. I have no idea if they're any good or not, but if they have any life left in them at all, I think they'll work for the test bench because all I need is 24 volts that can output for you know a minute or two at a time. So we're gonna dig these things out of here. I'm gonna hook them up to the voltmeter, which since they've been sitting for so long, using a voltmeter will be a really quick, easy test to see if they're still good. And I'll kind of show you how to evaluate batteries that are super old and if they're still usable. So I'm gonna dig this stuff out of here. Those batteries are on a tray, so they just slide right out, not too big a deal. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna start this project. Um, I've, where did I put all the parts? I've been organizing so much, I don't know where that old controller and the Mark V Imicare Electronics went, but they're in here somewhere, scrolled away, so uh, I really want to get those powered up and see how they work. I had a friend help me with uh, upgrading the electric heat in the garage here, 
Uh, we've got one of these Harbor Freight carpet blowers with the heater attachment. And we just hung it from the bracketry that holds the garage door opener with some carabiners. So, yeah. So yeah, this thing's pretty great. Uh, you turn it on and it heats this room up pretty fast. There is a vent in the bottom of that furnace, but I wound up moving the dryer over there, so it kind of blocks that now. Plus, I try to avoid running the furnace during the day, because it's, uh, well, natural gas in Portland is not very cheap. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, these are Group 24s, 75 amp hour. How old are these things? Looks like there's some writing on there. Uh... There's a date written on, written on them, February 4th, 2010. Oh, Omega Track. These are the batteries that originally came in the Omega Track. Ew. I don't know if these are any good. They are 11 years old now. Is that how math works? 2010, 2021. Yeah, the Omega Track's sitting over there. I wound up putting some different batteries in that thing. I wasn't 100% sure if the batteries in that chair were bad. I think it's the way the electronics work and the way the battery gauge is. It doesn't seem to matter what batteries I put in there. They always seem to go dead really quick, according to the gauge. So it could be that I keep putting crappy batteries in it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get these things out of here and uh, let's get the voltmeter and see what's going on. By the way, this Storm 3 or whatever it is originally came with Mark V electronics also. I threw those away years ago, however. Um, but it has high speed motors on it. I'm not sure how many miles an hour they are, but I think we're going to take the motors off of this chair to use for the test bench. All right, so we got our voltmeter here. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, we're at 1.6 volts, which that doesn't really tell us anything other than they are very, very dead. This one is at 2.8 volts. So let's grab a charger and I'll show you how I test these things out. Okay, so this is one of those Schumacher marine grade chargers. Um, I really like these things because they have multi-chemistry support because a lot of times in marine batteries, you're gonna have sealed batteries that don't off-put any gas at all. So it's got standard AGM and gel cell power curves. The only thing is the fan is obnoxiously loud in this thing, so uh, so let's plug it in here. I've got it on top of this battery box. Um, this thing has a power inverter built into it, um, and I use the battery chart or I use this battery box as a jump start pack, and also as sort of a nice portable battery charger. Um, let's get this thing going here. That fan noise is going to be super obnoxious. Alright, so let me hook our voltmeter up here to this battery again. What I like to do is uh, hit them with, and I will set it to the 10 amp setting here. And we're going to charge it for just a few seconds and look at what the voltage does. And then I'm going to disconnect it. And depending on what the voltage does or what it goes up to or immediately falls back down to will tell us a lot about the condition of the battery. We're going to connect this up and see what happens to our voltage here. Okay, charger's turned on. We've jumped up to 17 volts. So we're gonna give this thing a few seconds here. And then disconnect it. And we've dropped that, we're dropping back down here pretty quick. So I'm gonna leave it connected for a little bit longer. And the idea here is to see if the battery is going to accept a charge pretty readily or not. And I'm probably gonna leave it hooked up for about five, 10 minutes. Then we're gonna come back and disconnect it. And if the battery immediately drops down to like eight volts or six volts, that'll tell us we that we have shorted cells. Right now when I disconnect it, it's going down in a pretty linear fashion, which tells us potentially the cells might be okay. But the rate that it drops tells us a lot about what's going on inside there. And these batteries are not bulging or anything. So they could be heavily sulfated, uh, which is something that happens with older batteries. But uh, yeah, like I said, as long as these things hold 12 volts, um, we'll be good for the test bench. We're not gonna be actually running around in a chair. We're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and I'll come back. Okay, well, it's not looking good for this battery. As soon as I disconnect it, actually, maybe it'll be okay. That went to 11, then 9, then 8. 
So sometimes with these, the cells don't always wake up together, so we might be all right. Uh, I checked it a couple times and it would immediately drop to eight volts, so I would say there's probably one cell that might be weak in there, but uh, yeah, we're gonna let this thing go. If there is a shorted cell after about 20 minutes or so, this charger will throw an error. And we do have this one blinking light right here, which means the status of the battery is still unknown. I think I'm just uh, kind of in a hurry here, so I'm gonna let this thing run for a half hour now and uh, see what happens. This thing will start freaking out if there is in fact a shorted cell, but uh, our voltage is slowly dropping, which is what we wanna see. As the battery is accepting a charge, this number is gonna keep going down further. Now you can see there the charger is attempting to detect what's going on, so the voltage will go up and down a little bit. And then the little microcontroller that that thing has uses that data to determine if there's issues with it or not. I'm going to shut up and we're going to wait. I'll be back. So I figured while we're waiting here and I've got two chargers, I've got them both connected. Uh, they're both set to the gel slash AGM, AGM profiles and I've set them both to two amps. So we're going to very slowly start to bring these things up. And what I've found, especially with older batteries, both of these chargers will probably kick off on an air when we're charging on the two amp mode. But it starts sort of a small saturation charge going on and we'll start to wake the cells back up in here. So we're gonna give this a while. I'm pretty sure both of these are gonna give us an error at some point. Um, interesting to note though, this one is a transformer based charger. So it's usually better at picking things back up from zero as opposed to this one that's completely solid state. So anyways, once again, I'll be back in a little bit and we'll see where we're at with this. All right, and there we go. As predicted, this charger is telling me, hey, there's something wrong with that battery. That only took about 10 minutes. All right, some time has passed and I wound up having an issue with this, uh, with this other battery here. This battery here kept triggering the fault on that charger and it just didn't want to charge at all for whatever reason. So what I wound up doing was grabbing a fully manual battery charger. Well, mostly manual. Uh, this one can output 2 amps or 6 amps, but it always puts out the constant 14.2 charging voltage. So, no matter what's going on here, uh, this battery is going to be getting the 14.2 volts injected into it, as you can see here with the meter. The one thing this does show, however, there's an ammeter here, and this little needle will tell you how much amperage is actually going into the battery. So sometimes I've found that with these electronic chargers, they're not always very good at waking up batteries that are super dead. You just have to cram that voltage in there and uh, basically let it wake up. So if you keep an eye on this needle right here, I'm going to disconnect this and you should see it move down just a little bit. There, see how that fell down? And when we hook it up, we're getting a little bit of arcing now, which means that this battery is actually taking current or power or voltage or whatever. So let's take a look at our meter here, and I'm going to unhook it, see what our voltage drops to. Hey, look at that! So we're at 12 volts. We didn't instantly jump to 8 or 10. That means that this battery is going to be serviceable. Now, I need to make a distinction between serviceable and usable. I wouldn't put either one of these batteries in a chair that I'm going to actually run around in because their capacity is probably not going to be very good after all this. All I need them to do is hold 12 volts each to be able to put a little bit of load on them for the test bench. So, yeah. Um, this other charger here, it started at, it uses this arbitrary rating of 0 to 100. It started at 15 and now it says 16. So, let's transfer over the voltmeter to that other battery and see what it's doing. Okay, so this one claims to have 17 volts going into it. There isn't really a way to tell with this charger how much amperage is actually going in. But, let's disconnect one of these leads and take a look at the meter. And there we go, 12 volts. It's dropping rapidly, but it didn't instantly jump to 8 or 10 volts. If it jumped down to like 10 volts or 8 volts, that would mean one of the cells in there is shorted. So, this is good news. Tell you what, this is all getting really convoluted and confusing, so I'm just going to skip to the part where I figured out if these batteries are good or not, and I'm going to let you know what I did to get there. Um, at this point, it's looking hopeful. I think both of them might actually be okay. But the trick was using old school solid state chargers with transformers in them and none of this fancy uh, computerized stuff. It works fine for batteries that are good, for keeping them maintained and whatnot, but uh, bringing batteries back from like 2 volts or less, yeah, not exactly their forte. Even this one that has a solid state transformer in it, all the electronics in there, are just they're, they're too smart for their own good. So 
Anyways, I'll be back uh, in a few hours or maybe tomorrow. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see how these things are. All right, fast forward about 24 hours, and I've been cleaning the garage all day today, and for some reason I just decided to touch my face without washing my hands. And uh, yeah, allergies, so that's a thing. But we have significantly more space in here now, and uh, gonna need that for something going on tomorrow. Gonna be checking out a couple of chairs. So we've got the uh, two batteries we've been working on here. This one is done. It's been charged. I wound up unplugging everything overnight just because I like to monitor stuff like this because crazy things can happen when you're putting voltage into cranky batteries. So, started up again this morning. This one's all done. This one, uh, we're still working on it. This thing claims the arbitrary number of 85%, or, you know, 85 out of 100. I'm assuming it's percentage. But uh, I'm predicting that thing should be okay. I did notice, however, when I got these batteries up on top of the shelf, that there is a little bit of deforming going on. If you notice this terminal right here is kind of like poking up and like at a weird angle, the sides of the batteries also appear to be a little bit concave. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, this one is also the same way and it kind of looks like as well that the terminals are poking up a little bit on one side, but this thing's been sitting disconnected for about an hour now, so let's check our voltage on this and see if it has dropped down to something that's undesirable. All right, we're at 12.26 uh, volts. Awesome. I declare this thing functional, at least for a test bench. If we load tested it, um, I'm not quite sure what it would show, like how much power it could put out. By the way, something I forgot to mention, this is very, very, very important. Do not load test your batteries after you have been charging them. You wanna make sure they sit for like six or eight or 12 hours because with sealed batteries, there's a lot of gas and stuff built up in there. And if you load test old batteries like this after they've been charging, you might get a little bit of internal arcing. Now this may sound like witchcraft and weird stuff, like, oh, batteries on concrete floors is bad. But no, no, I'm serious. I've seen it happen with my own eyes many times. If you load test these and something arcs, while that gas is still inside the sealed battery, it will explode violently. So please, if you're gonna do this, do not load test batteries that have been charged at the very minimum within six hours. Wait until they've sat overnight preferably, then load test them. Super important, I'm repeating myself, <laughs> seriously. But uh, yeah, so this battery's good. I'm gonna finish charging this one, probably give it a couple more hours on here and then I'll let it sit overnight again. And then tomorrow uh, we'll see what our voltage is and that'll give us a lot better indication. But, but yeah, anyways, we're making progress. I guess I might as well say, but yeah, uh, Bounder's coming tomorrow. And I wanted to make sure there was enough space here in the garage because it's supposed to be pouring rain all day. So we've got, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but we've got a ton of space over here now. Um, I'm going to move these couple of boxes out of the way, get those organized. And then that cart obviously is on wheels, so that's gonna go somewhere else. We made a bunch of progress over here in the parts room as well. I've been uh, getting everything sorted onto these shelves here. We've got tires, uh, some permobile electronics, uh, a bunch of Invacare stuff here. This this corner of the garage over here was kind of the inbox for the last six months or so. And I've still got one more chair over here I need to pull all the parts off of. But I've gotten, I think two chairs now, stripped down pretty much. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I don't think there's any reason to hang on to it, but. But this was the power base from my very first power chair ever. I don't think there's any reason to keep it. It was a crummy Invacare. Uh, TDX SI2 and it's funny when I first got that chair and they delivered it I hopped in the thing it only back up when I first got my first power chair I was still semi ambulatory and I could still stand up and walk around but I was having issues with my back and uh, whatever all that stuff changed in a hurry but I hopped in the thing and it wouldn't drive straight it was like crooked and I told the guy I'm like hey this doesn't feel right I would never had a power chair before but you know, I rode motorcycles and dirt bikes and quads and stuff quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty familiar with when something isn't tracking straight. 
and uh, it was that place that rhymes with new motion. <laughs> um, he was like, oh, you're probably just not used to it. You know, you're not pushing on the joystick right or something. And he just kind of wrote it off as like, basically just telling me to my face <laughs> that, uh, you know, it takes you getting used to. I found out last year when I took the motors off this thing, maybe it was a couple of years ago, the frame is bent. So the way these, oh, that's really light. That's a rigidizer bar off of a titanium chair, a manual chair. Let's see if it's even noticeable. Yeah, well, it may not show up on camera, but the way Invacare chairs work, the motors pivot on this big shiny shaft down here and then sit on these two rubber pads. Then there's like a gas strut that goes back there and then the arm comes out front that the wheel's attached to. The whole thing just rocks back and forth. Well, the pin on this side is not straight. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. If we look at this side, you can see the angle's a little bit screwy. Versus this side. Actually, they both look like they're tweaked a little bit. Oh no, you can definitely see it. This one's tweaked backwards. So yeah, a mere six years after I get the chair, I find out, yeah, it actually was screwed up. <laughs> um, anyways. But yeah, uh, Bounder's coming tomorrow. They're going to bring me a couple of chairs to look at. Uh, we've got the Lynx Electronics one and then the Arnett powered one. And going to be looking at some stuff with them. They might, uh, might have an upcoming project uh, with 21st Century Scientific. We shall see. I'm going to head inside and get some dinner. And then i uh, going to come back out here and do all these last couple of boxes and that old rental scooter over there. Then some more, I think that's all Invacare parts in that box. But I'm finally utilizing the shelf and cabinet space in here. Well, not these ones. There's kind of some stuff blocking those cabinets. I mean, it is all on wheels. I, I did sort all this out. These, these two wheelchair lifts are on uh, piano dollies. And that's obviously a shopping cart, so it rolls out of the way. And the bounder can move itself out of the way. So, oh yeah, and there's, there's also this massive cart back here. This thing, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's like plywood kind of right there. That's an old bookshelf from uh, a company that did uh, di distribution for books.com. But that cart's got away five, six hundred pounds. It's full of motors and gearboxes. Um, but that's on wheels too. Anyways, I'm babbling. Uh, yeah, making progress in here. It feels good to finally get stuff organized and kind of label things. And I'm even going as far as putting specific parts in little baggies and labeling them. Because some of this hardware is like wildly specific. And if I just throw it in a bin, pieces are gonna get lost. But anyways. Uh, All right, well, um, one of the uh, very few political statements, I will say. So you know sometimes you're driving around and you're riding in a car, person driving doesn't really seem to be paying attention, and you say, hey, there's a giant pothole up there. It's like the same width as this car is. If we hit that, there's going to be a problem. Like, we'll probably get multiple flat tires. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, don't worry about it. And they just kind of stay in that lane and they keep going. And keep on driving and you're like, hey, pothole's coming up. And they're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, it's fine. And you just keep saying stuff occasionally and they're like, yeah, whatever. Then suddenly they drive through this pothole and blow out two or three tires. And they're like, oh my gosh, what happened? How, like, how could we have known? Um. <laughs> Anyways, let's check in on these batteries over here. They've, uh, They've been sitting for two days. By the way, look at all this space in the garage. Isn't this fantastic? So our batteries for the test bench here have been sitting... Oh, hang on, I reached this light switch. Hey. So our batteries have been sitting here for about two days. Let's check our voltage and see how these things are doing. 10.6 uh, volts. I checked it uh, last night and it was about... right about 12 volts. So, I think we're going to be okay with these batteries. This one here, I believe, is sitting at 12. Let's double check on that. Okay, 11.9. I've been talking about these batteries way too much. Long story short, they're going to work for the test bench. So, I'm going to go ahead and put them on a full rate 12 amp charger. We're going to let it rip. And uh, as that's happening, we're going to work on turning this cart into the test bench. Because there's a few power modules I want to get set up. Oh, and one nice thing about this Rubbermaid cart, check it out. I forgot, I already have a wheelchair charger 
mounted down here. It's uh, it's hanging upside down. I drilled some holes through, and we've got the uh, cable right here. So that's going to be perfect. I, I built this cart uh, a few years ago when I was living somewhere where there was a lot of construction going on, and I had to move my computer and a bunch of stuff around quite a bit. So yeah, I had the computer bolted to the top of this, had the wheelchair charger, my ventilator, everything was on it. So yeah, I think this will work great. All right, so if I'm not careful, this is gonna be a really, really long video. So I'm gonna make a few mods. I'm gonna start getting some things laid out here and then I'll pick up the camera and check back in with you guys. I think that's pretty much it for today. But if nothing else, we at least have enough space in this garage now that I can just indiscriminately run around going backwards and not worry about hitting things. Our batteries are over here. I've been letting them sit connected in parallel so they equalize. Not necessarily important, but I feel like it's something I should do. And yeah, I need to get a couple more things before we get this actual cart set up with all the parts we need to test out chairs and whatnot. So yeah, there you go. It was a video about batteries. Um, I don't know if any of it's useful. I mean, you might be able to apply some of this to potentially old chairs you've had sitting around. But again, I wouldn't put these in a chair. They're super old and they're probably super heavily sulfated. I don't have a load tester at the moment, but uh, actually maybe I do. I think it's at a friend's place. Anyways, at some point we're gonna load test these and just see if they are capable of doing anything at all. But yeah, there you go. Um, I am working with Bounder, 21st Century Scientific. Uh, we're probably gonna have a project coming up here sometime later on next month or a little further down the line. But uh, yeah, they do have new chairs now. They have Lynx and Arnett Electronics on them. I tested out both the chairs, like them a lot. Made a few changes to the suspension and some things like that. But uh, we will cross that bridge when we get there. For now, um, I think we're gonna call it good. So I'll catch you guys in a few days. I've got a lot more stuff that I've filmed. Oh, and also, I don't have the Quantum Forefront anymore. I'm gonna leave you on a cliffhanger. Um, lawyers have prevailed and that thing is gone. It's uh, It's been out of this house now for about three hours and it ain't coming back. So I think I'm gonna do a separate video about that and we're gonna make it part four or part five or the, the new chair series. It's gonna be the next installment in that. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit, but yeah. I'm gonna work on editing that tomorrow. So probably the next couple, two, three days, you'll see that video come out. But anyways, I'll catch you guys later.